Hi everyone, my name's Robin, and online I'm known as the Sudoku Guy. And this is a series of sessions where we're going to show you how to solve Sudoku puzzles. Now when first people see this for the first time, they say, oh, I couldn't do that because it's got numbers and I was terrible at math at school. Ha, huh? you don't have to worry about that at all. Also, some people will say, well, how do I get started? Well, in this session, we're going to show you how to get started right. But, but first, let's have a look at the introduction that we have on YouTube. Hi, my name's Robin, the Sudoku guy. Sudoku has become very popular recently. It's a lot of fun. It can be motivating. It's great to do in, a, in your spare time. And it's good for the brain. And it can be addictive. Just ask my sweetheart, Catherine. If you're a person who doesn't know anything about Sudoku, you've come to the right place. If you're a person who's done some Sudoku and got stuck and not sure where to go next, you've come to the right place. If you're a person who's done a lot of Sudoku but would like to learn how to do the really difficult ones, you've come to the right place. What is this Sudoku in any way? Behind me is a typical Sudoku puzzle. And all you have to do is to fill in these little empty white squares with the appropriate numbers. Now, I'm going to do something neat. I'll be back in a minute to show you this puzzle completed. Here is our completed puzzle. That was quick, wasn't it? And it consists of nine rows with numbers one to nine, not in order necessarily. Nine columns, the same. One to nine, not necessarily in order. And nine blocks of nine. Well, you look at this block here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not necessarily in order, but there's nine numbers there. There's another block, there's another block, and there's one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. So nine blocks. And you, that's it. Now you may wonder, how does that happen? Well, I've been doing Sudoku puzzles almost daily for over 14 years. I've been teaching it to young and old. And I've come up with a step-by-step -step method to how to solve these puzzles, from very easy to very difficult. So, why not give it a try? Bye for now. Well, here we are ready to have a look at our first lesson, where we learn how to start properly. Have fun. Before I show you a puzzle, I want to cover some of the terms that I use. Here we have a Sudoku grid, and each little white square here, I call them cells. And there is, the puzzle is made up of rows that go here, horizontal rows, and it's made up of columns, vertical columns. There's also these big squares, which I call blocks. There's horizontal blocks, three of them. There's, these are horizontal blocks. And these are vertical blocks. And our first lesson, I'm going to be talking about these three blocks in terms of their rows. Now, the rows can be called TMB. T stands for the top row. M stands for the middle row. And B stands for the bottom row. And the same applies to these three. And the same applies to these three blocks, horizontal blocks. So here we are, we're ready for our first lesson, horizontal blocks. So here we go with our first puzzle. Now let me tell you up front, this is a really, really easy puzzle. There's lots of numbers there. But I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step way of getting started. First of all, remember I talked about the horizontal uh, these blocks. We, I'm going to call them horizontal blocks. Top, middle, bottom, top row, middle row, bottom row. And we're going to take the first step. And what I look for is a number that's in two of those blocks, but not in the third one. And we're going to go easily in a sequential manner. Numbers start with one and we'll work our way up to nine. Let's take number one. If number, if you, number one in this block is in the bottom row. So it's already there. 
Number two in this block, number one is sorry, in this block is in the middle row. And in the this block here, the third block along, we call them horizontal blocks, there's a one there. So we don't have to worry about the ones. The ones are already in our three horizontal blocks. Let's go to two now. Two. In this block here, two is in the bottom again. And in this block here, two is in the middle of this block. And in this block here, two is already there. It's in the top. So we have a bottom, a middle, and a top. That was easy. We don't have to do anything about twos. Now let's go to threes. If we look carefully at these three horizontal blocks, you will notice that we have a three here in the top, in this block. We have a three here in this block, but it's at the bottom. Therefore, logic says that if there's a bottom here and a top there, the three has to be in one of those two cells. Now, what we can do, and this is where you use your little pencil, you put a little three. Now, some people will say you have different systems for where you put the little numbers in, but if, if the three could go in both of those. And now we come to the next step, and this is a very important step. As soon as you put those little threes in, you look down the column and see if there's a three there, because if there is a three in the column, then you can't have two threes in this column. That becomes a three because in this column we already have a three. So that cancels out this one. Therefore, we're left with that's the only place a three can go. And you only put a big number in when you know that that is the only place it can go. Now I'm going to teach you, because of that, something to watch for. And it's called finish off the block, or finish off the row, or finish off the column, if there's only one number left, one empty cell. And it just so happens that by putting that three in, in this block, we only have one empty cell left in that block. And in fact, if you look carefully, in this row, there's only one empty cell. And this is the way you find out what that number is. You count from one to nine. One, two, three, four, five. Where's five? Six. There's no six in there. So we put that in. Six there. But let's see if we can double check ourselves. There's always two ways of checking sometimes. One, go through along the whole row. One, two, three, four, five, six is missing. We got seven and eight and nine. So we put the six in. Now we've completed a block. Wee, wepo. And we've completed a row. Now by doing that, we have got, we got to three, didn't we? Now let's go to fours. Here we have a four in the top. Here we, we have four in this block, and we have a four in this block, but we don't have a four in that block. So we can work out through logic where the four in this block will go. If it is in the top here, and if it's in the middle here, it has to be in the bottom. So we put a little four here, and a little four there. Now the next step, once you've done that, is to look down the column. Is there a four here? No, there isn't. Look down this column. We've discovered a four down here. That means that this cannot be a four. Therefore, we can make this little four into a big four. And because we did that, we now look carefully and you will notice that we can go on to fives. Let's look at the fives. Here we have a block, and the, and the bottom row of the block, there's a five. Here we have a block, and in the middle row of the block, there's a five. Therefore, but this block doesn't have a five. Therefore, by logic, the five must go there, because you gotta have, you can't have two numbers in one line, so this is, becomes a five. And you know that that is correct, because there's no fives down in here. You can double check yourself. Well, guess what? By doing that, 
we have now discovered that in this block there's only one cell left. If you notice there's the one cell left, you've got to fill it in. If you don't see it, not the end of the world, don't worry. Okay, here we go. We'll go one, two, three, four, five. Well, guess what? It's a six again. The six goes there. Now, have a look carefully. This is interesting. If you look at this row here, there's one missing. It just so happens that it, I think it's a six. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six is not in that row. So six has to go there. And you know that is correct because here's a middle, there's a bottom, and there's a top. In other words, you can't have these repeated in those three rows. Well, have you noticed that in this row and in this block, we've only got one left? Let's count out, find out what it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine has to go there. There's nowhere else it can go. Now that block's got one to nine in it. Now that we've done that, we have completed, whoopee, blocks one, two, and three. Now, that doesn't always happen uh, at the beginning, but this is really easy. Yippee! We've completed our first very easy puzzle. So when we complete a puzzle, I like to give you a, have a good smile. Now next lesson we go a little further and we cover other things. Each lesson has a one step further. Bye for now. Well, that was lesson one, but let me show you something. First of all, in that lesson, all I covered was these three blocks using top, middle row, and bottom row. Each of these blocks here, as we call them, had of a top and a middle and a bottom. And the whole idea is that you never repeat a number in a row or a column or a block. Now, I want to mention uh, that this is a particular time when people ask questions. Now, if you'd like to ask a question, feel free to uh, write me an email. Uh, you'll see the email coming along the bottom of your screen at, during this session. In the meantime, I want you to know that the next lesson is another step, and it's called LCR, and I'll explain that later. Speaking about questions, here's the one that's come in from James and Kimberly, and he says, Tell us about your YouTube site. Well, I'm so glad to tell you about that because I've just reached today 1.4 million views with over 9,000 subscribers. And to su subscribe, it's free. Um, and um, I think we're in 177 countries and I've got 82 videos that I've produced over the years showing you how to solve not only easy puzzles but very difficult puzzles as well. So if you'd like to send me a question or have a question of any kind, just send me an email. You'll see the email coming up along the bottom of your screen. So now let's go on to another little clip. This is called the Sudoku Guy in action because I've had a lot of fun doing these videos. Well, that was fun. My next lesson is a very valuable lesson. It's another step where we'll teach you how to do these blocks going downwards. So that's it for the time being. Bye for now. <laughs>